the book of 1 John, 1 John chapter 5. We, um, we've tried very hard to take serious the author's original intent to his original audience. We've studied this book, realizing that we weren't the original audience, and there were some things going on that kind of seemed foreign to us, strange. And he was addressing those things, and, and when we figure that out, when we think about how it applies to them, then we can think about how it applies to us. Last week we um, looked at the first part of chapter 5, talking about the commands of God, and we reviewed what the commands of God are that He gave us in 1 John, and that was to believe in the name of His Son, and love one another, right? And then He says those commands are not burdensome, and we talked about how sometimes we make them burdensome, and how we get off, and how we sometimes, in our, and the way we think, makes those things a burden. But it's not a burden. Jesus has taught us to love one another. He's called us to love one another. And with that in mind, we're going to read chapter 5, verses um, 6 through 12. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify. Spirit the water, and the blood. And the three are in agreement. We accept man's testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God, which He has given about His Son. Anyone who believes in the Son of God has this testimony in his heart. Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because he's not believed the testimony God has given about His Son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has life, and he who does not have the Son does not have life. Okay. In and around Ephesus, in, or in Asia Minor, there are some people teaching some strange things. It's strange to us. Not strange to them. To them, it made all the sense in the world. And what we gathered from this text is these teachings have something to do with the fact they don't believe Jesus had a real body. Right? And we talked about where that comes from. That, that Greek philosophical idea about there's the spiritual and there's the worldly and the two shall never meet. Right? And that God could not become flesh because that just, that just couldn't happen. Well, in order to explain Jesus, they do some really strange things. Because they don't want to throw out the story of Jesus. They claim to be believers. But here's what they do. One of the things they do. They believe, or they teach, that when Jesus was baptized, hence the water, the Spirit came down on him in the form of a dove. Hence the Spirit. But... Before Jesus was crucified, the Spirit left him. And the person who was crucified on the cross was not God. Seems like a lot of work, doesn't it? <laughs> but that makes what they think make sense. They can live with that. They can live with that. That yeah, okay, God kind of, kind of, kind of, sort of got close and lived for a while among us, you know. <laughs> but no, no, he didn't, he didn't die. God dying just doesn't make sense at all to them. Now, because of that, we have this kind of strange passage in First John, talking about the three things that give testimony: the Spirit, the water. saying about making God out to be a liar. We believe in man's testimony, he said. But this testimony comes from God. And if you don't take it, then you've made God out to be liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> Tough thing to call 
God, right? But this is what John is saying. If you buy into this, if you want to look at this as your worldview, if you want to incorporate all of this into your theology, here's the downside. You're calling out a liar. Because he testified. In the spirit, the water, and the blood. The blood. We shot a little bit of ink today if you look on the order of your uh, order of worship. Shot a little bit of red ink. There is something very powerful in a picture with red. Especially when it comes to somebody bleeding. Why did these people want to give up Jesus having blood? <coughs> Why? Was it just because it fit into their philosophy, their worldview? Or is there something very, very, very offensive about Jesus bleeding? God bleeding. When you think of something bleeding, uh, several thoughts come to mind. One is you got to stop it, right? If somebody here starts bleeding, what would we do? Well, we do our best to stop. We and then we call somebody to come in a you know big red thing with flashing lights and take them someplace where they could really try harder to stop it. Because if you don't stop it, death. We're talking about death and blood. We're talking about price, the ultimate price. Right? We have Memorial Day coming up. I, I got it right, right? This time, sometimes I get confused and call it Labor Day. <coughs> Which makes people think the summer is over already. And that's sad. Okay. <laughs> Memorial Day. What do we remember on Memorial Day? Yeah. Those who paid the ultimate Price. We go and we put things on their grave. People who bled for our country, bled for us. We remember them, right? Very, very powerful time. Matter of fact, a lot of times we don't like to think about it because it's so powerful. And then a song comes up and makes us think about it, and we kind of get teary eyed. We say, Man, yeah, that, you know, I, I'm not grateful enough. I need to be more grateful. <clears throat> that kind of thing. When, I don't know if you guys, I think I've told you, I, I spent some time raising my family as a stonemason in Boulder, Colorado. And you do weird things on, on job sites, and, and weird things, <clears throat> traditions come about. And that would be somebody getting cut. In between the chisels and everything else went on. I'm sorry, my sinuses are still going nuts. I'm sorry about that. But when somebody would bleed on a job or on a stone, we say, okay, this one belongs to you. This is your job. You, you bled. You pay for it. And that would somebody would bleed on a job somewhere. And I can go back and I can show you the walls that we built so you know I bled on that one. Or Luke bled on that one. <laughs> Jake bled on that one. Or my brother bled on that one. You know, and our other friends. We, but it just, there's something about blood. Isn't there? Why do we want to take that away from Jesus? Why would they want to take it away from Jesus? Why, as a group of believers, do we choose to do this every week? Because if we didn't, we'd forget. And we don't like talking about blood. We don't. We don't like to talk about that. As part of that whole death thing, kind of show off to the <clears throat> death. Yeah. That belongs to somebody else. But every week we do. Because Jesus paid the price. And here's the testimony from God. That he had the spirit, the truth. That he was baptized. And that he bled. Now, it's a strange way for us to put that 
because we were in Asia Minor and we don't have problems with this kind of thing. I hope we don't have problems with this kind of thing. But we do like to forget about the blood. We like to forget about it. That's the price. God came and died. Died. That ultimate sacrifice, he died. He bled until he could not function bodily anymore. He died. And John says, you give up that truth, you make God out to be a liar. And the life in the Son is not in you. Did this have the impact that John wanted to have on Asian mind? I don't know. Did it change anybody's mind? Did this book change anybody's mind and say, yeah, you know, I need to seriously look. Yeah, I guess God did become flesh. Yeah, I, I guess he lived for a while among us and we saw his glory. And he was baptized and he did make that sacrifice, and he did die, and he was resurrected from the dead. Did it make any difference to them? I don't know. I hope so. Does it make any difference to you? Are you going to live your life any different this week because of the blood of Jesus? Are you going to make any decisions that are different than you would have made it before? Are you going to look at things in a whole different way because you believe Jesus bled? I hope so. I hope it stays with us. I hope what we do doesn't just remind us and become a little thing that we do on Sunday morning as we watch people come up here and march and we're leaving pass the trays out, come down, pass the trays out, and take them and put the trays back. And we say, okay, that means that we're getting close to the end, pretty soon we'll go to lunch. It won't make any difference to you. Do you not like to think about the blood? Here's the testimony from God, and this testimony is in your heart, John said. If you have life, the life in the Son, this testimony is in your heart. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. And this morning, we're going to remember that Jesus had a body. We're going to remember that Jesus blood by taking this little piece of bread and this little bit of juice that represents that blood and that body. The way that Jesus asked us to do, he says, when you come together and when you do it, do this in memory of me. Don't forget. Don't forget the red that's on the front of your order of worship. Don't forget. Because it's supposed to make a difference in your life.